Okay, now the rapid pace of innovation in the payment space is driving customer demand for faster and more cost-effective services that provide improved end-to-end -end visibility. JP Morgan is aligning its Expedite product with Swift Go to make it even easier for clients to implement a low-value cross-border payment offering. Okay, so we're going to look at this in more detail, and I'm delighted to say that we are joined in the studio by Gayathri Vasudev. Now, she's the Managing Director, Head of Payments Product for Financial Institutions at JP Morgan. That's a big title. <laughs> <laughs> Look, yeah, but you know what, it's great to see you. But look, we know that expectations are evolving because we've seen how the internet in itself has fostered a more global marketplace. And fintechs, of course, they're challenging banks in this space, although many of them are actually working together as well. And banks are looking to reuse the Swift Rails currently in place for their high value payments. So look, so much is happening, but it's a relatively sudden focus on low value and retail cross-border payments. So given all of that, why do you think that the focus has increased on that area? Low value payments, retail cross-border payments. It's more than coincidence, isn't it? <laughs> right, I, I think it's a huge market. It's about 700 billion uh, to a trillion dollars, depending on which study you look at, just for the consumer to consumer cross-border payments. And if you add all types of consumer payments, it can be more than $4 trillion. So it's a huge market and it's growing at double digit pace. So that's why everyone is suddenly interested in it. And if you look at banks, they have largely ceded that space to fintechs and money service businesses. Uh, and the reason is multifold. I think in the beginning, they thought it was a very low margin space. And then they were worried about the compliance angles and the high co operational cost of doing these high volume, low value payments. So they stepped away from it and the FinTechs and Money Service Bureau showed them that this can actually be a big business. And by the way, most of those firms use bank rails in the back end. Mm -hmm. So then banks have started focusing on low value payments. And I think what else has changed is the fact that there are new ways for banks to access different infrastructure now. And the fact that there is transparency of payments with Swift GPI, and, and so because of that, they're starting to see that they can actually play in this space and be more competitive. So initially, it looked as if they had missed a trick, but not entirely. Yes, all is not lost. <laughs> <laughs> Go through it. It's great to see the alignment uh, between Swift Go and JP Morgan Expedite, but how does it actually work? Yeah, just let me give you a quick snapshot on what Expedite is. Uh, it's a new solution that we've launched at Cybos, and Expedite Remit focuses on consumer to consumer payments. So what we are trying to do is to help banks capture and retain these consumer and consumer, consumer to consumer flows, which as I mentioned, they had sort of stepped away from that market. So um, that's what we are trying to do. And what we are trying to do is to help them settle real time where possible with full principal protection and upfront costs, right? So that's what a consumer really wants. If I want to send my mother $100 in India, she needs to know how much she's getting. I need to know what I'm going to be charged, and I don't want a $25 fee to be taken from that mm. uh, wire fee. So transparency, speed, simplicity, that's what we need, and that's what we're trying to offer with Expedite. And by the way, that's what Swift Go is also trying to do, trying to make these low-value payments cheaper, faster, better. And so we said we'll come together and let's you know, join forces. So what we're saying is that if a client uses, sends us a Swift Go payment, they can then leverage that network that we've built on Expedite to make payments in those corridors. And we've built out a lot of the high destination corridors like India, Philippines, US, et cetera, where consumers are sending money. And, and so clients actually have the opportunity to make payments to all these corridors instead of doing bilateral negotiation for each of those corridors. I mean, I, like, I do like the concept, the idea that you've got your existing architecture, then you've got Swift, you're combining the two things. And I see what it is that you're trying to achieve, but then it becomes a question of what are the biggest challenges? You set out the goals, taking the analogy of your mum, you're sending the $100, what is the, the biggest challenge or obstruction to making sure that when you tell her, I'm sending you $100, she's going to get $100, that okay, we don't have any charges to pay, but it's those other components. How do you overcome those? 
Yeah, I, I think I touched upon this, right? Banks thought this was a low margin business because they were trying to take a model that was meant for high value payments mm. and trying to retrofit it to low value mm. retail payments. Dilute it down effectively. Exactly. So what we're trying to do is to say, no, that model doesn't work. And so what Swift Go is trying to do is very interesting. They're trying to adapt that model to low value payments. And we're going even a step further to say, you don't even need to send me Swift Go. If Maybe you can just send me a regular SWIFT message. Whichever is your option, you can do that. And we'll use existing rails. But the way we are controlling the end experience is to settle via real-time rails where there are no deductions, they are cheaper, and they are faster. Can banks do what it takes to leverage JP Morgan, Expedite, and, and SWIFT Go? I think so, because if they're already on SWIFT Go, automatically they can leverage our expedite infrastructure. So that's what we've built. That's number one. And if they're already using Swift, they can just send us their Swift messages and, and we can leverage that infrastructure. So they just have to be ready to do that. And I think that's the beauty of it. The less work you make the banks do, the easier the solution gets. But then how many payment corridors will clients actually reach with this alignment? I mean, is there a roadmap? I mean, what is it? Yes, absolutely, there's a roadmap. And, and the key for retail consumer to consumer payments is not to think about, you can't boil the ocean. No point saying I can reach 100 currencies because you have to have a great client experience for the key corridors that customers are sending monies to. So for example, we have about 26 countries now which cover 40% of the key flows that consumers are sending. So think about where migrant workers send their money or expat workers send their money. India, China, Philippines, Mexico, those are the big corridors across the world. So we're building those out first. So we cover about 40% now, 70% of all the flows will be covered next year, and then after that, 90%. So that's our roadmap. Okay. And so all SWIFT Go and SWIFT clients automatically get access to that as well. Well, fascinating stuff, Gayathri Vasudev, uh, Managing Director, Head of Payments, Product and Financial Institutions at JP Morgan. I do hope your mother gets that 100. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to get it in rupees. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's been good speaking with you. Thank you. And enjoy Cybos. Thank you.